in this build, it's a double challenge build. Not only is it a woodworking project, it's a musical instrument project. So I'm building a tongue drum. So let me show you what we're doing. I've milled up some uh, mahogany over here for the bottom, maybe the sides and or ends and there's one nice piece that we think it's baduk or sapili that we're going to use for the top so now we got those pieces started let's see where we go from here. this piece of paduk we're using for the top the actual slit part of the drum we're going to use this to make the music so we're putting it on the drum sander to get it nice and smooth and ready to use then i take a couple pieces of mahogany and put it through the planer to get it to the approximate uh, thickness that we need for the sides and the bottom, which will be the soundboard. This is going to be the bottom. This is the soundboard, solid piece of mahogany. This is a piece of mahogany. This is the side, so this will be glued on that side. This is the actual board we'll cut to make the slits in for the tongues to play the musical notes. These two ends are here, and we have these pieces in here as placeholders. We're going to cut some lumber to fit the actual side, so the bottom will fit and rest upon that edge. And then I have a decorative piece of bird's eye maple for the front of the drum. I'm using a couple pieces of hickory because it's a nice hard wood. So now we have to cut this board here with the tongues in it. And I need to measure the distance that the support is here. So we'll put some marks on here because our tongues have to be cut a very specific length to get a particular sound. Took my template. So I took my template with the length of these tenons, <laughs> length of these tongues, because they're going to produce a different tone for each length. And I've marked them on here with the end part of which we will have the inside glued here so that will part here. I'm gonna to attempt to cut just a smidge past that so you don't get any bleed over from one tongue to the other. So these are the marks where we're cutting out. We'll have openings in the top and those locations. This is the feature I'm adding by just having a small recess, kind of like countersinking a sprue for each of the drum slits. I use my jigsaw to make the cuts for the slits as well as the cutouts in the board. So what I realized as I got the jigsaw blade close to the end, I was starting to have a little flake out on some of these chips. So what I am now doing, I'm scoring the front edge of each one of the tongues so I can prevent that chip out. I first started with the chisel to kind of bevel over the slits between each of the tongues. This appeared to be okay, but I quickly moved over to my card scraper because it was a lot faster and I could be able to create the bevel on both sides of the tongue at one time. So a little chisel work was needed to be able to get the ends a little bit smoother than just off of the jigsaw. Just took a little bit of time, but it creates a better looking end on your tongue. This is a dry fit of what's going to have to happen for the glue up. The key is to practice your dry fit when you only get one shot at it. Okay, so now I've glued in the two end pieces that help hold the boards firm for the precise length. 
and so this edge here is glued down so that means the length of that board is from there to here we'll come back in and measure that to make sure that's the length we desired okay so now we have the sample so here is my scale my chromatic scale or one octave that i attempted to create let's try it again not exactly in tune is it so going from high to low you can tell it a little bit better there put the letters on here for the tones that it actually is making this is a C4 G B Here are the challenges. I want this to be C. This one to be up in scale. So I've alternated up in scale. Actual result of what we were trying to do, I was trying to get this tongue to be 10 inches long. It actually ended up being nine and seven eighths. This note is too high, so it's shorter makes it higher. This one was to be 7.37 inches. It's actually seven and an eighth. It's too high. Nine and a quarter, 9.4, it's eight and a quarter, it's too high. Every one of these that is less in length end up being too high. I have one note right here, this one that is right on. It was to be 8.07 inches is 8.12. That's the closest one I have to being in tune. We have one note down here that's actually too low. We have to raise it up. It was to be seven 0.15 inches it's 762 makes it longer which made it too low so with that now we need to make our adjustments if two of the tones are touching each other they don't give you a true tone so a quick run with the jigsaw between the two just widen the gap just enough to keep them apart when they vibrated to make a nice sound So I have the bottom screwed in and I can, so I can take it off and tune it. Here's what the inside of it looks like. Each one of these that's near the base has helped to change the tone by lowering that tune. And if you wanted to raise it, you would drill near the tip of it. So this is how you tune it by either removing wood at the base or near the tip of it. Yes. Tuning the drum is a challenge, and that probably takes most amount of time and when you're making this tongue drum. But I really appreciate the video by Mr. Carmichael on how to make a tongue drum. It was helpful for me to know to make the tongues various different lengths to get the various different tones. Now, it'll provide me years of entertainment for my grandchildren and my son-in-law to be able to use this because he plays the guitar and now his sons will be able to play along with him on the tongue drum. So if you liked our video on how to make a tongue drum, give us a thumbs up. Want to see more of our videos? Consider subscribing down below. And as usual, come back and see me real soon.